All right. Hello and welcome to this week's Kubert Community Meeting. As always, my name is Catherine Morgan. I will be your host today. Andrew, are you on? Andrew Burden? I just wanted to say thank you for carrying the second part of the meeting last week. I know I had to run unexpectedly. All right, so let's see. Today is the 27th. So let's go ahead and jump up here. There you are, Andrew. I don't know if you heard me. I just wanted to say thank you for grabbing the second half of the meeting last week. And for everyone who's on, if you want to go ahead and jump in and log your attendance. While everyone is doing that, we have any new attendees today. Would love to invite you to speak up and say hello. I'd like to welcome you. Um, feel like saying what brought you here today or Uh, would like help adding anything to the agenda. We can help you do that. And for anyone who doesn't have it handy, the agenda notes are the link to them is in chat. All right, thank you to everyone who's adding items to the agenda. If you have any pull requests, um, any conversations in the mailing list or bugs that you specifically wanna call out for review, during the meeting today. Please find time to add those as you're able. All right, it looks like- Hi, Kat, I just like to down. say we can actually hear you. So it's not oh, just good. you talking to yourself. That is fantastic. And I really appreciate you speaking up and saying hello. I, I have made the mistake many times of just talking to myself the whole time and eventually someone will ping me and say, hey, are you talking? All right. It looks like things are settling down on the agenda. Again, if you do have anything you wanna add, don't be shy. And with that, we'll go ahead and move on to the Brit Launcher Downward API item here, it looks like. Edward Haas, you might have something to say about that. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to check if someone here um, maybe has experience or knows or have any rules about it, because I think we are not using it at the moment. I'm not really sure. Um, it's, a, it's just a way to, it was raised with one of the options to use for some uh, fix that we need. We need information to be reflected from the, from the pod up. Uh, it's an annotation actually at the moment on the pod and we want it to reach the virt launcher. So there, are, there were several options to do it. And one option is to use this download API, which event essentially creates a volume and, and mounts the, the information on a file on the pod. And it's, it can change on the fly. If you change the information, it can change as well. But the question is, do we maybe do we already use it in Covert? And if not, is there any cons? I'm looking for cons to use it. Yes. That's it. What do we need to use it for? 
Uh, I think we already do use it, but I, I want to understand. Like, I think we use it to pass some environment variables and things like that and to divert launcher pod. But um, yeah, what, what was the use case? So the use case at the moment is we need to pass information from uh, from an annotation. I, I mean, I would prefer not to discuss on, on on if we need to use it or not, but in general, we want to pass the information of Multus network uh, status. It's a report that Multus posts, uh, puts on an annotation on the pod. And the content there is, we need that contact in order to correctly um, uh, hot plug or plug the SRV virtual function into the, into the domain. So the question, that's it, I guess. And this information, by the way, changes. So the information, the info, this information changes in the case, actually it doesn't change, yes, it's static. But it's so right now we're using the downward API to pass in at least the pod name, it looks like. Like I'm just looking at how we build the uh, pod spec. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to avoid this. I think that I would prefer instead of using a volume pass in information using yeah. a environment variable. Yeah, it's not, the problem is that we cannot use the, I think we cannot use the environment variable because I think that's not like, I'm not 100% sure uh, that with environment variables, we cannot change it. And the problem here is that the information is reaching uh, is coming after the pod is created. So the pod is created. There is an annotation that is added by Multus at some point, and that information we need to pass. So at that point, the pod is already created. So I don't think we can change the environment variables, but I'm not sure. Like the volume, I'm sure we can change the, the, the data there, but I'm not sure if we can update the, we can add new environment variables while the pod is already running. Okay. Maybe you know. Yeah, hey. I'm, not, I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I I did pretty much exactly that in Vert Handler already to uh, get Multus information uh, for the dedicated migration network. And yeah, uh, indeed, it was the only solution I could think of. Uh, an environment variable was not an option. So the, you use the volume? I, I use the, the downward API. Yeah, but you use it for with volumes or with environment variables? Uh, with a volume, yeah. Okay, okay. So it's already used. Okay, great. So in Berlin, can, I'm not sure, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you can, it would be great if we can have like a, an example. So when we do the our stuff, then we can reference it. So if you can, it would be great if you can paste here a link to this. Yeah, I will. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Actually, one additional thing here, like I'm looking at the code right now and I can see that when you're like when we're templating the pod, like uh, if you like it allows for the pod template to feature the downward API things. So if you put this on the VMI spec, it will eventually trickle down to the pod from what I'm understanding. So it was actually thought of to be used. At some moment in time. What do you mean on the spec? So if you put like something with the downward API on the VMI spec, like uh, the volume, it will be like the pod templating thing will put that information into the pod spec. Ah, so it will it will copy it. You mean? Exactly. That's for passing like with the annotation. So what, what we want to do here is use it in Bert Launcher proper, I think, not inside the guest, right? You, we want, we need to, uh, we need to tell, we want to take a special, specific annotation and uh, downward it. But just to the pod, not into the QMU guest, right? Yes, in the pod, yes. Mm -hmm. in, 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 uh, the launcher will read it and will do whatever it needs to do. So you're saying it's part of the API of the VMI? This 
to pass it into the virtual machine guest. Like it's, uh, I believe. Ah, uh, yeah, but I don't think yeah, we, exactly. it's like not. We yeah, don't want to configure. Yeah, okay. But yeah, it's, it's nice that case. we have it. Okay. Really different. Yeah, there's no reason to avoid the downward API that I'm aware of. Uh, I mean, of course, we'll have to see the PR, but uh, it sounds reasonable. Okay, thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you for bringing that in. Um, the open floor item today, domain join after clone. Uh, some conversation was in Kubert Dev. I'm not caught up on the Kubert Dev thread for that. Uh, are there any specific questions? I know that there's um, different ways of managing Windows instances, presuming this is about Windows instances. Um, yes, it's about Windows. Uh, we would like to have any help uh, to create the YAML file with the XML file uh mention uh, from alex uh but we didn't get any lucky until now how to uh implement the domain join of the the windows uh to active directory after we clone it we have prepared an image with sysprep in a proper way but uh, after run it, we need to do the domain join. Uh, the, the, the scripts uh, mentioned on, on the answer from Alex Huxley uh, <clears throat> doesn't mention how to use that on the YAML file. Any yeah. help is very welcome. <laughs> yeah. Um... If anyone has anything specific on that and wants to add to the Kubert Dev discussion, um, I will link it back up here. Is there anything Kubert specific to that? It sounds like a question that's um, generally yes. applicable regardless of what we hypervisor to, you're using. We 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 would like to to modify the YAML file of Kubert and uh, be able to do the domain join with that uh, YAML file. And this is uh, the goal, you understand? That's <laughs> what we was not able to do until now. I'm gonna try and not get ahead of myself with general assumptions on the topic uh, without at least being caught up on the Kubrit dev side. Um, does anyone else have anything top of mind to add to that that might be pointing in the right direction. All right. Um, again, if anyone do, does come across info that might be helpful adding to the Cooper Dev conversation on that would be welcome. OK. We're going to go ahead and jump into PRs that need attention. Hello, everyone. This is my pull request. OK, thank you for bringing it today. And let's see. Looks like we have reviewers on it. Is there anything specifically you want, you want to call out for attention on this? Mm, earlier, the default cache mode is uh, right back. This is not safe for us. Yeah, sorry, I, I added this to the um, thing. I went through the pull requests and pulled out the stuff that doesn't have any comments on them. So that's why it's, Got it's it. on me. But. Mm, but there is nobody approved for the testing. Got 
cut it. Do we... Are we able to go ahead and start that? I actually haven't triggered that from proud before. Is there something I can do to start the testing? I know I'm still learning on some of this. Is there anybody approved? Hi, Kat. You should be able to add uh, OK to test just as a comment. It should be queued for testing then. Uh, is that like a forward slash command? Yeah, OK to test. Am I doing like hyphens between or? Yeah, please. Yeah. There it goes. Sweet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And update recording rules names. This has reviewers on it. Is there something I can do to help this one along? Or anyone else here? I just want, I have one uh, administrative uh, comment here is um, try not to use the uh, okay to test too much. It's usually for uh, non-members PRs in general, usually someone needs to explicitly run a specific test and, and, and use the okay to test only only when it's like, only when you feel it's uh, it's appropriate to give like uh, from now on uh, approved to test it on all uh, future pushes because it this is what it does actually. Do we have um, something documented in developer documentation or something like that on what types of tests we can request or? Um, I think that the, there is this list. Uh, no, so this is the, the point is like there is a change and the change probably affects a specific test. Uh -huh. And then then the specific test, you need know, to do slash test and then the name of the test, it's from the list below, I think. But this is like a, not a hard rule, it's just it. a, sometimes it's, I think it's okay to do it. It's okay. more, let's say it will help the CI to be less, uh, loaded and it will mm -hmm. also be safer for arbitrary PRs. Edward, would this one fall under SIG networking? Or SIG, sorry, not SIG networking, SIG, SIG monitoring. I can, I can, Kath, I, I can take a look at this one after after the meeting if you want and I can. Okay. Um, that sounds good. Forward. You just need to see which, uh, which test this is uh, supposed to touch, I don't know. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. All 
right. Open yesterday, Kubert bot, and is there anything that needs done on this right now? It looks like. Yeah, um, I just approved it. Go. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Hi, um, I'm Ole. Um, that's that's my PR. Um, I I just wanted to know um, uh, how can I move it forward? Like I I think I'm missing uh, an approved label on this. Uh, so just wanted to bring it to um, attention. Thank you for bringing that up. I'll also add some context um, to this. This was some in a PR that we've been working on as part of the SIG scale. It's one of our performance jobs. Um, when I think the, the 400 VM density test doesn't clean up after itself correctly. So this PR is, is focused on addressing that so that job will start working. Got it. Uh, it looks like it's being actively worked. Is there anything specifically that needs um, extra discussion or action right now? Yeah, so um, I have um, tested this PR locally. Uh, it works. Um, and um, uh, I think there is just one label which is missing in order to um, you know, merge that. Um, I was wondering if uh, someone um, someone can bless it with, um, you know, take a look and bless it with an approved label. If um, yeah, if if there is anything on my side I can do to help with this um, review, um, please let me know. I can share more details as needed. Um, all right, if there's gonna not gonna be any other action on that right now. It does sound like it is getting attention, especially from the six scale group. I'm going to go ahead and move on for now. All right, this is a draft PR. Is someone on to speak at, about it status? So that's my fault. I didn't see it was a draft. Oh, OK. All right, we're going to go ahead and skip that one for now then. And also draft. Okay. And Andrew, thank you for coming through stuff and bringing things in that needed attention. All right, let's go ahead and jump to mailing the list. Let's see. So this has been a little bit of chatter. Virtual machine instance preset in favor of renamed instance, uh, virtual machine instance type. Looks like this conversation doesn't have or at least this comment doesn't have a response.
All right, it looks like there is ongoing conversation to identify any objections or critiques. If you have any um, to share now, please feel free to speak up and contribute your thoughts. Uh, otherwise, feel free to find the conversation in the Kubert Dev mailing list. And with that, I think that covers the linked mailing list item. Um, is this a comment that is unique to another conversation that I need to find? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I was not able to link. Uh, That's fine. I think it's this one. Yeah, that, that one. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think there's a conversation going on, but um, I just wanted to get uh, get this um, for um, opinion in the community. Um, so there was an issue uh, reported that I have reported that does not the the Kubert admitter webhook does not uh, validate spec dot affinity, um, and in order to add that validation, it would be great if we can. Uh, uh, import a package from uh, Kubernetes. So basically the same validation that uh, the pod runs, uh, we should be able to validate those um, in VMI spec as well. However, um, the validation package is not uh, exported as a standalone uh, package like, like the type score v1, which can get you the pod. Um, so, I was wondering if um, if folks feel that this would be useful and we sh like should report this um, in uh, upstream Kubernetes to add that as a standalone package that can be imported. All right, do we have any additional commentary, thoughts, or ideas on the call? Yeah, um, thanks for um, giving me an opportunity to raise this. I um, appreciate it. I'll follow the thread. All right, I think that captures the general gist of the point raised. Yep. Thanks. All right, if anyone has any um, ideas, solutions, or next steps to add, please feel free to contribute. All right, and on the bug scrum. Disk bus type IDE.
Okay, does anyone know if IDE was removed as a type? I believe it was just available as part of first implementation of Kubernetes, but after that, we ah, gotcha. it doesn't exist. But I'm not sure what's the reason behind it. Is that something that would be valid for um, enhancing with a PR? I think so. If there is no reason why we should not support it, I'm not sure why, why it's needed, but. Fair question, too. Please. Including external device. This is what I'm thinking of. Um, a few people were tagged on this for their thoughts. I just thought I'd throw it on here for um, awareness. Got it. I can have a look after. Thank you. I did some uh, direct kernel booting uh, with Kubert a few weeks back, and it worked in my small test case. Interesting. All right. This was also mentioned on, uh, on our Slack. Um, yeah, and I, I don't have an idea how to how to move this further because it's nesting virtualization. So probably oh, it will be interesting. But the recommendation was maybe to file a bug on Bugzilla uh, on Red Hat side, and maybe somebody from Red Hat could have a look at that. So this appears to be KVM specific. Yes, um, if I understood the uh, understood it correctly, it's like. Uh, you have a VM and, and probably it's also KVM VM and on top of it we, uh, we over the user creates another one mm -hmm. with Kubert. Well, does it mention it's uh, nested? 
It was mentioned on the Slack. Okay. Can we update this ticket to that? <laughs> Yeah, if we can capture any of the additional context or have them add it to the bug, that would be helpful. Uh, was that in the public report slack? I'm guessing. I have copy past you the link to to the Slack chat. All right, but, um, if I direct them towards Bugzilla, would that be out of sync with what was already discussed? I'm not up to speed on that conversation. It looks like Ronan Muir has suggested that yeah. in the Slack channel. Okay. Uh, I got a thumbs up uh, from the stuff. But yeah, there's no bug link in that Slack chat, so. But I don't understand, just just to just for to understand it, how is it related to, I mean, Bugzilla? It's like, it's like asking to open the bug on something else, I don't understand. Yeah, so what I'm understanding is that it, it appears to be Kubert, or uh, not, not Kubert specific, but rather, um, KVM specific. And so that would be well handled on Bug Bugzilla. Yeah, I mean, a uh, few of the vendors actually support nesting and virtualization. So it was suggested to open the Bugzilla because Red Hat is trying to fix a few of the bugs in nesting and virtualization. What is, can, just a question, can this be like, if that's correct, then even opening a Bugzilla, they will probably need uh, to recreate it in a simple setup, like, uh, I don't know, with directly with Virsh or something. Is that possible? Like, I hope you understand what I mean. Instead of using a cover to create the, the VM and then inside of that VM, something else, or the opposite, I don't know, can it be recreated in with a simple VM? Um, I was hoping to ask um, in this comment if they are able to reproduce the issue um, in straight Kubert, um, and if so, to take it to to Bugzilla for that. I mean, you mean without Kubert? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know the answer, but we can just ask. But it should be pretty, pretty doable. And Kubert doesn't add anything magical on top of it.
Okay, and with that, we've reached the end of the agenda. Um, was anything else added or is there anything missing that we should be sure and discuss or review before the end of the meeting? Going once, going twice. Thank you all for joining and for contributing to day, today's uh, call. Look forward to seeing you same time, same place next week. Have a good week. Thanks, Kat. Bye.